or if you're new here, welcome just in general. I know I've been uploading a lot lately, but that is because I was unwell. I'm feeling a lot better now, if you're wondering, and I haven't been at work, so I've had time. And I also realized I'm not gonna get a decent pay this fortnight because I was unwell, so. I need to get the money, you know. I've got rent due, bitch. We're doing another book haul because your girl has issues. We know this. I've got a nice little stack right next to me that I want to show my YouTube followers. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen this because I tend to um, post my book mail over there. So make sure you're following me. Uh, yeah, so whatever, you know. I just wanted to show you guys some books that I've recently bought. I've read majority of them. Let's chat about it, you know what I mean? They're pretty because you know... I don't buy ugly books. You know this. My bookshelf is looking like a goddamn bookstore for a fucking reason, and that's because I don't buy ugly books. Also, my hair. Let's talk about it. So, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you're not going to know, but I naturally have curly hair. Like, I remember late primary school, my sister, before, like, flat irons became a thing, used to literally iron her hair with an actual iron. And then I'd be like, do mine please. Anyway, I have straightened my hair with a flat iron for, since I was 11. So I'm nearly 26 and I'm trying to get my natural curls back. So I washed my hair this week. I put some product in it. I haven't brushed it. And this is what it naturally looks like. Like it's honestly so knotty right now because I haven't brushed it. And I just pulled my fringe out and like, fucking curled it so it looked ah, semi-decent anyway you don't really care about my hair do you probably not but i just wanted to inform you what i'm doing i'm going on a hair journey i'm trying to get my curls back because i fucking ruined them so if any of you guys have any tips tricks advice for getting your curls back let me know in the fucking comments below because i know there's a lot of you out there that have curly hair so many people get surprised when I say I've got curly hair and like show it off on camera they're just like wow we thought you had straight hair no bitch no, I have semi-red hair. Like my hair color is like semi-red. It's it's like an auburny, browny red. It's really unique. Uh, not many people I've come across in my lifetime with the same hair color as mine. Uh, it doesn't really show on camera, but when I'm in the sun, especially during summertime, it's like orange. It's unique as fuck. Anyway, so I've got like orangey curly hair naturally. Okay, moving on. The book the book buying industry is fucking huge, yeah? And there's just tons of books to buy. I can't help myself. Like, I am expecting a new parcel today. I really hoped that it was going to get delivered before this video, but it fucking won't. I just know it. And my cart's already full. My Amazon cart is already full, hun. I don't fuck around, okay? I get it done. So, the first purchase I made was The Truth About Heartbreak by B. Celeste. Now, I have read this before. I read this back when I read After. Like I, you know, I fucking finished the After series, got on booktube and I was like, I need more romances and found this and read it. I do like this book. It's not my favorite out of this series, I guess, that B. Celeste has written, um, but I do like it. This is about this girl that moves in with a new foster family. She's really damaged. She's been through the ringer, hun. This thing, honestly, every video the past couple of days, I've just like had a fight with it. Like I'm about to punch on with you, bitch. She builds a really beautiful bond with her brother and her brother has a best friend that she has the hots for. And he treats her like a younger sister, but their bond is definitely more than like a sibling relationship. I love this cover. I didn't want to buy it. <clears throat> I don't know why. I just didn't want to buy it. Um, but now that I have it, I'm so glad I do because this is one of my favorite covers. It's honestly stunning. This one here um, from B. Celeste is my favorite from her that I've read and from this series. And this is The Truth About Tomorrow. Now, this is one of the most taboo books I've ever read. And it's actually fascinating to me that no one actually talks about this and how taboo it actually is. I can't really give away too much about this book because it will give away the first book, but it's about this girl who is, I think, 13, um, and she starts crushing on her adoptive uncle. Now, it's not romantic when she's 13, but their connection starts building around that age, and he is a lot older than her. He's an adult. Now, 
You know me, I'm down for the taboo, I'm down for the forbidden. I love a good taboo forbidden read. And it's just like, it's not reality to me. I know this, these types of stories can happen in real life and have happened, but um, in my world, with me, it's like, I, I would never come across this, you know? So I don't mind reading like taboo forbidden romances. I honestly don't have many hard limits. One of my only hard, lim hard limits I have is uh, human trafficking, depending on how it's written. But I just think it's really funny that no one fucking like goes on about this book and how taboo it is because that, it is one of the most taboo books I've ever read. And I don't want to throw Beast Less under the bus because I enjoy this book. It's, I love this book and I think it's a beautiful cover and I've read a few of her books and I do like her writing. But I think it's funny how Lucia Franco gets so much fucking trash like thrown at her because of the Balance series where I think this one's 10 times worse. I really do. I think this one's more taboo than balance. I really do. I don't care. Like, I love it. I love taboo shit. But it's just interesting that um, everyone, you know, gets their back up about balance, but no one talks about this book. Anyway, it says here, the truth about tomorrow, age is just a number, and it's a stunning cover. And you can tell with both of these next to one another how beautiful they actually do look on the shelf. <clears throat> They're stunning. They're very good reads if you're into taboo type of romances. The first one isn't as taboo as the second one though. But they're both good. The second one's my favorite though. Oh, I had to have it. I had to have it guys. I had to have it. There was no way I wasn't having this series paperback form. Like I can't wait until I want to dive back into this series and just chew the fuck out of it. You know what I mean? Just eat it bitch. Eat it. So this is the Maid series by Danielle Laurie. Now we all know that I don't particularly like the first book. So the first book is The Sweetest Oblivion. Yeah. Um, I didn't F this. I didn't enjoy this book. I just didn't connect with characters and that's totally fine and normal. You're not going to love every book that everyone hypes up. Um, that's the beauty of reading. Like everyone has different reading styles that they prefer, but I didn't want to own the other two books without it, so I did buy this one. Then we got The Madness Obsession, which is what made me fall in love with this series. Oh, it's so good. It's Mafia. Obviously, I'm a Mafia queen. I'm known most for my Mafia recommendations. I just hit that plant again. Uh, so this one is about a dirty Russian federal agent in the States who works closely with the New York Mafia. The New York Mafia's boss has a young wife um, who is constantly getting in trouble, who is constantly making mistakes and getting like just in shit, getting stuck in situations that she shouldn't be. And for some reason, this federal agent is always there. And he always gets her out of these sticky situations. I loved this book. He is an alpha. If you love alpha man, Russian man, uh, mafia lifestyle, you're going to really enjoy this. Then we got the best from the series. And this motherfucker has my heart. Like, I have sold my soul to him. Man, I tell you now. I've said it once. I'll say it again. I would fucking marry this man in a heartbeat. Where's the plane to Moscow? I am coming. You know what I mean? Like, Ronan, where are you? Where actually are you? So this is The Darkest Temptation. There he is on the cover. So this is about a young girl who has a Russian father. The Russian father has been in Russia for like three months and misses her 20th birthday. She's gutted about this and comes up with the idea that she's going to go over to Moscow from Miami and find her father, find out what the fuck he's been up to and what's going on over there. Her bodyguard tries to stop her but is unsuccessful as she gets on a plane to Moscow by herself and goes there. It's a weird time, man. People are looking at her weird. She doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know anyone in Moscow. She's just kind of like winging it, walking the streets. And she gets uh, in this encounter with a man who tries to attack her. And then she like barges into a uh, back of a restaurant through an alleyway and runs into this guy. At first, this book is like, oh my God, this is so amazing. But things flip real fucking quick and it becomes a captive romance. It's a very dark read, but it's it's brilliant. It honestly is brilliant. I I I love Ronan. Like I actually fell in love with him and I'm so upset that I am in love with a fictional character. And mind you, for anyone that says like but you've got a boyfriend, um you can love more than one person at one time. Don't you worry about it. But he is my fictional man. He really is. I'm obsessed with him and I love this cover because it's him, me and you baby, we are one. It's brilliant. So if you like mafia shit, this is good. This is great. And 
It looks brilliant next to Cora Riley's books as well. They're exactly the same size. So my two favorites are sitting together on my bookshelf. So we've got Credence, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I've mentioned this in the last two videos. It's brilliant. Um, I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I've already spoken about it so much. And then we got The Infamous Birthday Girl, which is a age gap, slow burn, one of the best that's ever been written. Penelope did a wonderful job with this. And then we've got Punk 57, which is a pen pal enemies to lovers romance set in high school. And I love this cover. Not my favorite book in pen, but uh, I do love this cover. And I just love that I have these in person now. I wasn't going to buy her books because I just didn't know if I was gonna like them in person. But now that I do have them in person, they are stunning and they look really good on the bookshelf. I need to buy her new release that came out today. It came out today. Well, last night for me, but I need, I need to buy it now. But my Amazon app is not fucking working. We need to have a chat, Amazon. Hmm? Me and Amazon, we have a love-hate relationship. Like, every time I order from them and I look at the price, bitch, I die. And then when I see how long it actually takes to get here, I'm like, Amazon, we are not friends. Like, how can you treat me like this? But then when the books arrive on my doorstep, I'm like, I take it all back. I take everything I said back. I love you, Amazon. We are one. We will get married one day. Why do I keep saying we are one? I don't know. Okay, so this book I bought because everyone hypes it up and says it's one of the most emotional reads of all time. So this is a love letter to whiskey by Candy Steiner. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, yeah, I bought it because it was affordable. I believe it was only like $14 or something ridiculous. It was really cheap when I bought it. And, um, yeah, everyone talks about it, so I don't know. I'm going to go into this completely blind. I haven't read the blurb. I haven't looked at any reviews. I find my favorite books when I do that, when I go into it blind, when I don't know what to expect. That's when I find a book that I think is brilliant because it just consumes me because I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to find out. If I go into a book where I've read reviews, I kind of know what it's about. I don't enjoy it as much. So don't tell me, but I've got a love letter to a whiskey. I just bought this and Kay Webster so just changed the cover. <laughs> But that's okay, I like this cover. So this is Kay Webster's Whispers and the Roars. So I love Kay Webster. I don't talk about her too much on my channel, but I've read a few books from her. And every time, she doesn't disappoint. She does not disappoint. She's someone that I like to read when I'm in a reading slump. I like to just randomly pick her books. Um, so everyone said that this one's really good. It's quite a small book, which is good because I get overwhelmed with big books. Um... And I'm just like really excited to read this. Again, I don't know what this is about. I don't know. I've just heard that people said that it's a really emotional read and it fucks you with you. So I'm down for that. You know how I love getting head fucked. And then I bought this, which is Dirty Ugly Toy because I love this cover. I think this cover is stunning. And on the bookshelf, it looks so good, bitch. It looks so fucking good. All I really know about this is it's kind of like a captive romance, I think, which is bizarre. I don't really like them. I don't like captive romances, but I'm willing to give it a go. There is a warning here. Let me read you the warning. Kate Webster blurs lines, bitch. She blurs them and she blurs them well. Warning. A Dirty Ugly Toy is a novel that blurs the lines of right and wrong, deals with abuse, contains dubious consent and adult subject matter. If you are sensitive to violent sexual situations, the book may not be suitable for you. Some parts of this book are not easy to read and are not intended for everyone. However, those that keep an open mind and stick with it will not be disappointed. Yes. I think this is going to be good. I think this is going to fucking rock me. And she's just, um, it's got a quote in here too that says, as men get older, the toys get more expensive. How accurate, you know? So yeah, that's exciting. I'm going to start collecting Kay Webster's books because I just think they look really nice on the shelf. I like her covers. And yes, it's just going to be a good old time. Don't you reckon? I reckon. A Thousand Boy Kisses. Like, bitch, this book is YA as fuck, but it is so emotional. It's one of the most saddest books I've ever read. I bawled like a baby. When I finished reading this, I got on Instagram and I was just like, oh my God, my life. Why? Oh, it's about these two kids. It's about Poppy and Rune. Rune's from Norway. They meet when they're kids and they fall in love pretty much instantly. And then their world just falls apart around them. Um, it's brilliant. Uh, it's, it's very good. It's very, very good. I can't say this word. Un the un mm, unrequited? Un mm, bitch, you know me and my pronunciation. I'm doing wonders in life. 
Uh, so this is from Saffron A. Kent. This is one of the first dark romances I ever read and I love this cover. So, you know, it's kind of nostalgic for me to have. And I just, yeah, wanted it. I love the cover. If you listen to Lana Del Rey, I suggest listening to her Born to Die, I think it is, album while reading this. It's fucking perfect. So this is about a college student who kind of has like an obsession problem. She gets obsessed with people and she goes to college and she becomes obsessed with her professor um, and kind of follows him around and stuff. It's really good. <laughs> so if you know Michaelia Smeltzer, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. She has some of the most stunning books ever, like Sweet Dandelion. And she'll come out every now and then with different covers for um, her books. So she has like two covers for each book. So she recently released Nice Guys Don't Win. Um, and this is the original cover. If I can be bothered putting it in, I will. Probably not. I can't be bothered. Look it up if you want to see it. It's got the dude on the cover and it's green. She came out with an alternative cover for um, this book with the woman on it and it's purple. <gasps> I know I died. I know. You're dying. You're not breathing. Should we call 911? Well, actually, it's not 911 here, hun. It's triple zero. But do you need someone to come, a medical professional to come and give you more fucking oxygen because you're struggling to breathe? Because this book cover just sucked the air right out of you? Yes, I agree. So I get a lot of comments on my, not a lot, but a few people have pointed out that I read a lot of um, books that have white characters in them. I don't mean to be like that. Um, I'm all about diversity. I just struggle to come across them. Uh, but that's something that I'm working on. I'm actually going to try and do like a... Um, like a suggestion video, I guess, for authors that are people of color or a recommendation video where the characters are women of color or men of color. Um, because when someone pointed that out to me, I was like, that's actually fucking correct. That's actually correct. But I must say, a lot of the authors that I read are white. And for me personally, like I'm an aspiring author. Let's have a real chat for a minute. I'm an aspiring author and I would love to write diverse characters, but I feel like a phony. Like, I can't write about a black woman. Like, I, I would feel like a phony and I'd feel like people would shut me down if I did try to write more diverse characters. I am trying to a certain degree. Like, I have made a lot of my characters in my books from different European countries. But, um, yeah. Anyway, my point of saying all that is, look at this goddess on the front, honey. She's melanin kissed and she's beautiful. And the characters in this book are melanin kissed. So Michaelia has your back if you're looking for more diverse characters. She's also a thick bitch, which I love. We eat around here. We do not starve ourselves, girls. We eat. Just because society thinks that you have to be skinny to be pretty, they're lying. A lot of men actually enjoy junk in the trunk. I'm not going to lie. They do. They like to see things jiggle when they fuck you. I'm just, I'm pointing out facts. Some men do like, you know, more petite women, smaller women, skinnier women. But a lot of men actually like girls that have some meat on their fucking bones. And that's delicious. It gives them something to eat, man. You know what I mean? So make sure you eat. Coming from a girl who had an eating disorder when she was a teen, okay? Eat. But yes, she's a thick girl and I appreciate it. And this cover is sunny and it looks brilliant on the bookshelf. Once I, people keep asking for a bookshelf tour, but I'm just not ready. Okay. It's got to be the full wall and it's going to be full with books. Um, I'm actually going to be filming a semi reading vlog today. Um, it's kind of, it's going to be my nighttime reading routine, which is super exciting. I'm going to show you guys what I do, um, at night when I'm like getting ready to read and where I read and what I'm reading. Cool. Right, I'm done. I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.